Hello and welcome to Aston Brown College based at our Stuart Park campus in Middlesbrough. So some of you might be listening to this presentation and wondering who we are. Aston Brown College is one of the UK's largest specialist land-based colleges. We have six locations across the north of England and we do offer residential rooms to some learners on some of our sites over at York and Newton Rig in Penrith. The overview of this presentation. So what we're going to look at in this presentation is we're going to look at the courses that we run at Stuart Park and we're also going to look at the entry requirements and the equipment and resources that will be needed to apply for this course. So at Aston Bryan College in Stuart Park, we offer level two land and wildlife, level two animal care and level three animal management. And the level two land and wildlife, um, the, this course is quite a new course to us, but what we do offer is the countryside and conservation pathway. So when we do this course, we include modules such as health and safety. The learners get to look at the different machinery involved in managing land and wildlife. We also look at the conservation and improvements of British habitats. We look at state maintenance and species identification. Um, the learners will be required as part of this course to undertake 315 hours worth of industry placement. So when it says industry placement, it's a placement that a student is required to obtain themselves and they complete 315 hours within the sector. Um, so it can be anything from zoos to wildlife parks to countryside and conservation parks. Anything which we would see would be relevant to the course. The learners are required to com complete those 315 hours and it is a man mandatory element of the course. Another course that we offer is level two animal care. So level two programmes are one year um, and we usually see these courses as a stepping stone. Um, often learners will go on to the from the level two to the level three course. Some of the modules that are included within level two animal care are animal health and welfare, animal feeding and accommodation, animal behaviour and handling. And again, there is that essential aspect of the course where learners are required to complete 315 hours of work experience. So with animal care, we would want students to be in a placement which is relevant to the course. So anything which has animals in it and where the students can actively get involved in the general care and day-to-day maintenance and husbandry of those animals. Students will also do additional units including animal biology, British wildlife species and exotics. And these are all contributing factors, uh, elements to the course. And without passing all of the individual elements, the learners aren't able to pass the full level two qualification. Aston Bryan also offer level three animal management. So the level three animal management in the first year of study, we study modules such as animal health, feeding and nutrition, behaviour and welfare and redevelopment. Again, they have health and safety elements of the course. Learners are required to do 315 hours of industry placement, but the 315 hours is per year. So the level three, is two year course so learners will be expected to do 315 hours of work placement both years. Learners will also do additional units as part of the course so in this one they do animal biology, they do exotics um, and they also might do estate skills or pet store design and management as part of the course. The entry requirements for the course, um, we ask for the level two programme, we ask for learners to have four GCSEs at a minimum of a grade three. Preferably in the, within those four GCSEs, it would include uh, maths, English and science. And we also ask learners to have a suitable reference. So the four GCSEs, um, if you don't have English and maths, you might be asked to do something at a grade three. Um, you might be asked to do something a little bit lower, like one of our level one courses to let, enable progression onto the level two. Um, we also run two versions of the level three animal management um, qualification, the level three certificate. So the level three certificate is a little bit different because it's still a level three course. However, learners either 
need to re-study English to get it to a grade four or maths to get it to a grade four. And within that, we allow them to still do a level three programme, but they would re-study the element that they needed to re-study while they were with us and they would be provided with an opportunity to uh, retake that exam. It is a government requirement for learners to engage with English and maths to get it up to a grade four um, until the learners are 18 and over. Level three diploma is a little bit different again. So a level three, the entry requirements, we need them to have grade fours in English, maths, science and one other GCSE and that doesn't really matter what subject it's in, um, but we would prefer, prefer preferably um, have it something a bit related to the course. Again, all of these entry requirements require the learners to have a suitable reference, be that from school or a, pre um, a previous job that they may have. The students that come to us, we've got some examples here of what students have to say. So um, it's worth a mention here that not all of the students that we have are straight from school. We do have some mature students. Um, so it's not limited to the fact that just because you think you might have been a few years out of education, we do we do allow students to come at any age. Um, that will just require a little bit more focus on the financial side of things, which we can talk you through. But generally, students that come to us say that they they really enjoy the course um, and they made some lifelong friends while they were with us. So the typical week for a student when they're at the college is they'll do three days per week in timetable lessons. So the learners that I have in currently do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then they'll do two days a week um, out on industry placement. So the learner does need to source that placement themselves, but we can provide a list um, detailing what placements we are aware of and students have gone to previously. Um, and that two days a week we know means that the learner will meet the required 315 hours as part of the course. Currently the college day starts at 9am and it finishes at 4.15pm and we have dinner and short breaks throughout the day so learners will do one lesson and then they'll get a short break and then they'll go to the second lesson. Um, we usually do three lessons in the morning and then the learners will go off for lunch and then we do two lessons in the afternoon and then the day finishes. Um, throughout those lessons there's a mixture of theory and practical sessions and we also facilitate different modules coming into the timetable so that's including uh, English and maths for the, the, for the learners that still need to study English and maths. We also do upskilling, employability and student appraisals so the student appraisals allows the tutor to check in and see how the learners are getting on. Um, we also do employability, which works on things such as uh, creating and constructing a CV, applying for jobs and UCAS references for university. So a very important module. And we also do things like upskilling. So upskilling are things where we see that the student needs a bit more um, a time, maybe focusing on a certain module that's quite content heavy or we might do things to help them in terms of writing essays or answering exam style questions, whether that's short answer or long answer. We basically use upskilling as what it says on the tin to provide the students with a skill set, set that we see appropriate um, to the course. So we do have a variety of facilities at Ask and Bryan College. Um, so over at Stuart Park, there's some nice pictures of the classrooms, the typical classroom would look like. We've also got Henry's Cafe, so it's worth mentioning that Stuart Park is based on a public park. So Henry's Cafe, students can go in and get their lunch, um, but it will also have members of the public in to get their lunch as well. But it is a nice feature and it allows students to go off with the friends and go to a cafe to eat from there. If you do have your prepared students that have brought the packed lunches, then we do have student recreation rooms on site, which gives the students a place to sit and eat the packed lunches. It also gives them things, interactive things to do, such as play pool. Um, we also have a variety of vending machines across the site, which allows learners to get refreshments and any snacks that they might want. Um, 
We've got a variety of facilities at Stuart Park. I think two of the big, the big ones for us is the science lab. So in the lab, we do all sorts of different uh, practicals for the students. We allow them to do dissections of animals. We allow them to do one-to-one -one work with uh, bacteria. We might get them looking in microscopes, uh, different uh, cells, all sorts of things that we can do within the lab. Um, and it, it, we do boast that um, as one of our strengths because it is such a practical and interactive way of teaching and learners generally really enjoy that hands-on approach. We've also got the animal unit. And so the animal unit is split into three different sections and we've got some dedicated animal keepers looking after our animals. We've got our small animal unit, which consists of a variety of small furries, including rabbits, guinea pigs, chinchillas and dagoos. We've also got our purpose-built reptile rooms that are split into humid and arid rooms. So we've got bearded dragons, we've got various snakes, lizards, um, reptiles, all sorts. We've got amphibians and fish tanks. And we've also got uh, separate paddock animals. So the paddock animals you might have seen when you visited Stuart Park, if you visited before. The paddock animals, we've got a range of animals, including llama, deer, goats, pigs, and the learners will get an equal amount of experience with all of the different animals to get them as industry ready as we possibly can. Um, they'll work practically come rain or shine, outdoors or indoors, depending on where they are timetabled in and planned in for, for that day. The other facilities that we boast at Stuart Park um, is the library. So the learners have a variety of resources. Obviously, we've got the books, which include horticulture, equine and animal care books. We've also got quiet spaces where students want to come up away from the noise and study. They can study quietly within our library. And we've also got um, unlimited computer ac access when the students need it. Um, sometimes these will be booked out, but the learners can go to those computers when they are free and work readily on those computers. So for the course, the course materials, usually the pretty standard stuff that you would expect at college level. So we need pens, paper and notepads uh, and general academic resources. But what we will also ask for for animal and the land and wildlife courses is for the learners to come prepared with, with overalls and steel toe cap boots. So the overalls need to be navy blue and they need to zip right up to the neck and the steel toe cap boots we usually ask them to be black and with obviously with the steel toe cap by the toes what we will ask um learners to do is just be mindful when you're investing in the steel toe cap boots that the students will go outside in all weathers so be careful when buying the steel toe cap boots or at least have a pair of wellies um to buy ourselves up with we all know what british weather can be like so it's always good to be prepared and we'd hate for you to ruin some boots um, out in our paddocks. We do run a variety of trips at the centre so we've got some nice snapshots on here of trips that we've done previously so our learners have gone to places like the Yorkshire Wildlife Park, we've done trips out to the Dogs Trust, we've gone to Flamingo and then in Brazil. We don't always have to stick to academic life so um, we do try and do some fun trips for learners, things like Alton Towers and the Centre for Life. Um, we try and do trips as much as we can. Usually it's just before a half term, we like to win the students on a little bit of fun. So some of you might be sat there thinking that the course sounds great, but where do I go from here? So with our level two animal management courses or animal care courses, what we generally say is if the learners achieve a merit overall, um, what we allow them to do is progress on to level three. Now, just because you're starting on a level two, level two doesn't restrict any learners in any way. And that can mean they can go on to a level three programme of study. If the students were then to complete the level three programme, it would allow them access into university if they wanted to go that way. Um, we also do the land and wildlife co um, courses. Progression opportunities would be available at York and Newton Rig cam uh, campuses that where we can go students can go off and do the level three version of these courses we've also got level three year one so pending that the learners pass all of the elements of the course so that's the exam and the practical aspects and the written elements of the course they can progress on to year two 
In level three, year two, if they pass all their exams and their assignments, they can progress on to things like apprenticeships in the animal industry. They might go on to employment. Our additional units do students um, a lot of favours in terms of employability. They can go off and work in places like pet shops. They can go, I've learned, known learners go on to canine hydrotherapy units. And sometimes even zoos will take students on at an apprenticeship level. If the students wanted to, um, they could also progress on to university because that does provide them with the UCAS points available to go on to university. We also have a wide range of degree options and courses available at Ask and Brian in York if the students wish to continue their learning journey with Ask and Brian College. So what we also want to talk to you about is our community within the college. So we've got transport routes available um, that are all in a central location. And we've got excellent transport routes around us. So students will either be able to get on one of our college buses or they'll be able to get a general Ariva bus and we will supply the Ariva bus passes for them. We've also got the student union, which can help us organise trips. We run a variety of clubs and supports. And we've also got a specialist learning support team. Um, if students need to speak to anybody, we've got Chris Munster. Um, and we've got Jill Wood, who are our learning support team, who do a fantastic job in taking care of students and the mental well-being while they're at the course. It's worth a mention that we're not just based around education. We do like to tag a little bit of fun onto the courses. So we do offer things that might not necessarily be considered academic, um, but we can offer a range of activ activities that supplement the curriculum. Um, places like we might go white water rafting, we might take them out to silent discos, we might do things like phone parties with the learners that are additional to the general curriculum. So the last slide that I'm just going to talk to you about is starting your journey with us. So on the link here, you can click on the presentation. So apply now to study for September 2020. If you do have any questions, we have got an email address there that we've supplied, which is just inquiries at askin-brian.ac.uk. And whilst it's been a bit of an unfamiliar way of me delivering this presentation, I'd just like to wish you the best during this difficult time. Stay safe and we look forward to seeing you studying with us soon.